Hey everybody, John Grimsmo here at the Grimsmo Knives Shop. I'd like to introduce you to Erin. She will be our new media coordinator and help us film and edit and do website and all kinds of crazy stuff. We're gonna have a lot of fun together. Um, a couple weeks ago, I posted a picture on my Instagram page of a bunch of students from McMaster University who are in a marketing program and they wanted to do a case study in our business. So they came to the shop a couple times, interviewed me, learned the whole story and everything, and they're coming up with their suggestions to uh, help improve our marketing strategies. Um, post more videos is certainly one of them. Uh, so Aaron and I, were gonna go watch them at the university present their statements, their thesis and everything, and it's gonna be a blast. Come on. Our group is going first. Uh, we're in the Chicago Corporate and we're going to be doing our presentation today on Grimsmo Knives. So, Grimsmo Knives is owned by uh, John Grimsmo and his brother Eric, John's in the back right there. Um, so they focus on producing high quality custom full assisted knives. And I want to talk about what's changed since our last presentation at the company. So since we last uh, presented about a month ago, uh, they increased their production by about 700%. So they've octupled the amount of knives they produce. They've gone from producing a knife every two days to about four, to four knives a day. They've also increased the wait list by their, uh, their customer wait list by about 60%. And they've hired a full-time machinist and a marketing employee, Aaron Pat as well. Um, so for a quick rundown of the four keys, uh, the product is a high-quality custom assisted folding knife. They have two lines of knives. The Rask is the Norseman. Uh, and each knife there's potential 12 customizable options you can get. So the price ranges from nine to three thousand dollars. The base price of nine is with no, it's just base knife, uh, and it can go up to about three thousand if you were to get all of the customized blocks available. And there's generally no fluctuations in the price throughout the year. Uh, in terms of promotion, the Erin, the marketing employee, she uh, she's now going to be taking over kind of the social media aspect, revamping the website, and she's also going to be brainstorming new marketing ideas and trying to get uh, new social media ventures going. Uh, and up to this point, they've done most of their advertising through uh, YouTube and Instagram, so it's been all zero cost for them. And uh, uh, replacing distribution, they're, uh, they're located in Sony Creek, Ontario. However, most of their business is done in the States. And because, uh, because of this, all of their sales are made through their website. They have no storefront. And the order process of the knife is basically you sign up for a wait list for whichever knife you want, and you will be randomly selected. Uh, if you're selected, you have 24 hours to purchase the knife, and if you don't respond, then it's just another customer selected. Currently, they're not taking custom orders, they're just selling knives to you. And for a quick uh, overview of the business problem, our original objective was to try and hit a million dollar sales in one year. However, with the recent changes that's happened to Grimsville, they've kind of uh, hit that themselves, they're quite on track to do so. And so, the new problem we've come up with is that they're ineffectively leveraging their brand name, we feel like they could be uh, leveraging it more effectively. And the objective that we decided to tackle is to increase their revenues by 5% in two years. Um, in terms of the target market, uh, Grimsville has a pretty strong following on social media, so we're going to try to look at their current user base first. So behind me is a map of the top 10 countries with the most subscriptions based on the YouTube market. So that so, uh, mass is 40,000 subscribers, 8 million YouTube views, and over 90 years of YouTube block time. So, in terms of the audience trends, each and every demographic kind of tells its own story. So, for example, the U.S. is the most subscribed by far, by a factor of 10. So, they're the ones that are consuming the most content on the YouTube, uh, on the YouTube platform. And Canada, for example, is the most interactive. So, they're the ones that comment the most. So, every 82 views, they're giving you one comment. And that's five times as many as any other market uh, on the YouTube platform. So, how does this view to compare to the website? Um, on the website, there's actually a higher percentage of American visitors as compared to the YouTube platform. If you look at Canada as well, that is also a little bit higher than on the YouTube platform. So um, this could be correlated perhaps to the fact that games are a little more interactive than everything. And if you look at the trends, you, you notice that the five countries on YouTube are the exact same five countries on the website. So this could be an example of people uh, consuming the, the products on social media and then looking for more information or perhaps even looking to purchase. So the age, um, the majority of people fall between the ages 24 to 44, so this is about 61 percent. And these people are also the people with the highest retention rates. So they watch the most, um, they retain the most, they, they watch the longest, um, the most interactive, um, and they're almost like this in every single category. So these people are also about 97 percent male, which is a pretty high rate. Because of the current 
mark we have and the information for the industry, we've established a target market as males, uh, American males age 25 to 44, who are also outdoorsmen or crop servicemen. And these people perceive the product as an extreme luxury item, like a, uh, an item of extreme quality. And these people are purchasing this as a unique purchase or even a gift. Um, the decision making criteria is quality over everything, and they're also looking at the attention to detail and the overall design of the object. And this forces the people to um, kind of ignore the price. They're, they're purchasing the, the item outside of the cost of its core function, which is visibility. The influencers are the Grimsworth brothers themselves. They're the the greatest influence of their own product. Um, they're, the, they're content focused on the manufacturing, design, and everything <coughs> surrounding the Grimsworth brand causes people within the community to purchase knives. So there's a lot of people on our market, and a lot of those people actually own knives. So between just servicemen and servicewomen, that's 5 million people, 90% of those people own knives, and the vast majority of those people actually own more than one knife. And furthermore, sportsmen alone spend, spend 90 billion annually. So there's three to six million households in the US that contain knives, and 80% of these new knives purchased are one-handed folding knives, exactly the same as what Grimsworth sells. Um, US manufacturers are also doing quite well, at over $800 million in gross revenue. There's also a lot of opportunity within uh, the Grimsworth brand. So 50% of all visits to the website are through direct sources. So they're just typing the Grimsworth uh, website name directly in the URL. Um, Facebook also tells a bit of an interesting story since it's the second most uh, referred social site, even though Grimsville has no active Facebook page. Um, and this is important because Facebook is still the number one source of social referrals in terms of sales among websites. Uh, Grimsville is also uh, has an immense brand value that they're clearly not leveraging. Um, Grimsville has a large presence within the international market on their social media, and with the increase in viewership and the rates and uh, retention and everything, uh, these new markets are becoming new and emerging. In terms of threats, there's always a threat towards the legality of knives, uh, especially one-handed pulling knives. Although this is very minimal, in the past there has been a legislation against automatic knives back in the 50s, so this could potentially be a problem in the future. Um, the economy and loss of disposable income um, considering the knife is such of a high value, so if people use disposable income, this could damage the overall sales of the knives. In competition, which Tavis is going to uh, touch on shortly. Some other external factors, there's a very high barrier of entry for this product, considering the quality of everything and uh, the just sheer time it takes to produce this product. And the lack of suppliers required, since Grimsville does everything in-house, um, the really only thing they need is material stock. So moving on to the competitive environment, we'll be looking at the primary competition first. So Grismo has custom knives. Uh, Shirkora has custom uh, custom knives, production knives, which are basically the base model of the custom knives, and mid tech knives, which are uh, part custom and part outsourced. Uh, and then Thai also has custom and mid tech knives. Uh, Shirkora and Thai have official retailers. Uh, and as far as customer interaction goes, Grimsmo uh, uses YouTube and Instagram to interact with their followers, and Shirborov uh, sure, sure, and Ty only use Instagram. Uh, worldwide shipping, Grimsmo ships everything worldwide, all the products from like the t-shirts and the knives. Uh, Ty only ships their mid-tech knives uh, worldwide. Uh, packaging quality, so this is a picture of their packaging. It comes with uh, tools and oil for the knife, and it comes in a hard plastic case with custom foam, uh, while Shirborov and Ty only come in a small box. Uh, small, yeah, small box. Uh, Shirborov also has a problem with copycat knives, so there are quite a, quite a lot of uh, fake Shirborov, Shirborov knives in circulation, and people buying them are they, they don't know about this, and this hurts their advantage because uh, they're, ha they're of worse quality compared to uh, the actual thing. So, moving on to the secondary uh, competition, uh, I looked at two knife workers and knife retailers, uh, Blade HQ and Knife Center. Um, and for this chart, I basically, it's not rated out of three because it's more, like, more of a yes or no. Uh, to deal so product variety, Blade HQ and Knife Center have a wider range of products. They have uh, even for knives, they've got uh, kitchen knives, tactical knives, hunting knives, um, and even the flip knives that Crimson makes. Uh, they've also got interest-free payment plans to for orders over three hundred fifty dollars. 
Um, WHQ actually has a brick and mortar location, so you can actually visit their store and have a feel for the knives if you like. Uh, for knife information on their website, uh, all three of them have it. They've got they list the materials used in the knives, uh, the, the manufacturing processes used, and some uh, knife ma knife maintenance tips. And uh, you're only going to interact with the knife maker with Grimsmo because they're they're the knife maker, while Blade HQ and Knife Center are retailers. So moving on with Tom. Grimsmo knives not effectively leveraging the value associated with the brand name. We feel this is causing them to lose out on potential profits, which at the end of the day is uh, dropping the bottom line. So, our goal. We want to generate 5% initial revenue within two years, which is approximately $50,000. And we want to do that by extracting value from Grimsmo's existing brand through the introduction of new revenue streams, and by strengthening Grimsmo's existing brand through the improvement of new customer interactions. The root causes which we feel are not allowing uh, Grimsmo to really utilize their brand name are one, Grimsmo's time has been focused on the production and manufacturing of the knives without having dedicated enough time to the brand name, uh, and two, lack of marketing efforts that are focused on that are focused on new customer relations. Now a bit of background knowledge and theory. So first off, a brand is no longer the identity, uh, is no longer just the identity of the company. There's value associated with it. When people are comparing objects, they don't compare just specifications to price anymore. Um, you know, people are willing to spend more money because of the brand name associated with it. So there's value there. Um, there's also brand authenticity, which currently is a key to Grimsmo's current and future success. So people value, uh, you know, morals and values in a company. The fact that they're open, you feel like Grimsmo's done this very well. They are showing everything on YouTube. They're just showing their customers everything. And we feel that's something that they can really leverage. And finally, the internet is the new age form of marketing. So a website serves as a visual representation of the brand. And so it must uphold the same quality standards uh, that the product that the brand has. And it's something we feel like we're going to improve upon. So we want to introduce high quality products that require minimal time, commitment, are outsourced, have high profit margins, and most importantly, maintain the quality of the brand. As you can see here, we're suggesting baseball caps and tubes. So in conclusion, will this solution meet the objective? Yes, we feel that within two years or sooner, depending on how uh, well they sell, you will make over $50,000, which we want you to. Does it solve the problem? Yes, we feel it leverages the value in your brand to create more revenue. And the final recommendation that we want to make is that you should collect additional primary data before introducing a new product. You have a massive amount of Instagram followers and email lists that can be easily be contacted. And say posting a photo on Instagram of four different products that you guys are debating on introducing, why not, um, in exchange for them commenting on the post, add them to a raffle to win the prize that gets selected. All right, so in the marketing presentation, they suggested uh, hats and tubes. Why hats? Well, it comes down that it has to be a product that can move across the right going to want to use. So, you know, they were bringing up the concept of like an $80 hat, like the nicest hat you could possibly buy, right? So talk about that briefly. Uh, it would fit more in with uh, the quality of customers you're trying to adhere to. And while most people can't afford $1,000 knives, it's more likely that they could afford a $100 hat to still represent the brand and get your logo out in public. So to you guys, is that ridiculous? Would you actually like, you know, be mad at us if we started making an eighty or hundred dollar hat? And it would be super nice, obviously. But it's it's food for thought, right? Like I don't want to put out a twenty dollar hat that's garbage. <laughs> Anything else? Like things that are really big right now are patches. Yeah, I don't yeah. Know that. they're really big into our yeah. industry. Yep. I, like I put patches on everything. Really? Like, yeah, because I have like on my backpack or on my like you like wear red suits at school, so like right. patches. <laughs> What are your guys' backgrounds? Like, what are you going to school for? What do you want to do? I'm in my fourth year of mechanical engineering and management. Okay. Um, and I don't know. I, I'm, I'm in partial right now. I'd like to go into motorsports or manufacturing. Another one of those. Motorsports as in driving or? No, like, I, like designing okay, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. So, like, advanced nice. materials kind of thing. So, nice. actually, just, just four of us, except for Tejas, are in <laughs> mechanical engineering and yeah. management. There's a program here that tax on business to engineering. Right. So most of us are kind of engineers first and business people later. Than that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, so I'm in the same program. Uh, I'm actually most interested in like power generation. Uh, hopefully, I want to get like renewable sides, like solar. Um, yeah, yeah. Not opposed to nuclear either. Sure. Yeah. Tejas? All right, so I'm in 
uh, business and I'm focusing on accounting. Nice. Yeah. I'm learning more about accounting, so I, I, I kind of get it now <laughs> from an insider's perspective anyway. Uh, I'm Daniel. I'm also in uh, mechanical management fourth year, and I'm interested in more of the manufacturing or like the thermodynamic and energy side of things. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so I'm Matt, I'm mechanical engineering management also, so my focus is more so like automotive and like vehicle electrification, things like that. Nice. We're getting into such a point now where core product is becoming a real thing and we're in this production schedule yeah. where it's like time away is money away, you know? It's, yeah. yeah. Unless we just get more machines. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What do you think of the second strategy? Because right now your user base is just so focused on the social media and the guys that follow you in the community. So the website is to get more outsiders into the community rather than yes bringing like the users the, the like, like taking group, content yeah. away from the corporate. Sure, sure. Yeah. Right. yeah. And I really like, like the idea of having the showcase on the website yeah. at this certain yeah. times that we have. Because right now it's just sold out. So I was even saying that it was a little bit confusing. Right. Right. Sometimes to so know of like, oh, are they still even making knives? Yeah. Because I know there's like there's a couple of quotes that I was, I was we were going to put in the presentation. Like people on YouTube, like I know in a video like four months ago, a guy's like, Where can I get your Norseman? I really like it, but it haven't sold out on the website. Right. So it's like there's a bit of confusion there, right? Absolutely, yeah. And also it's the most interesting with like the direct sales part of your website, like how like almost everyone is just going to like typing, typing in your directly. Yep. And part of that might be because they're looking for information or looking for content like updates, like if there's like stuff you're doing on YouTube, so you have a new True. But, I think a lot of it might be associated with people checking your stock constantly yeah. and seeing like, oh, maybe one day I'll see one and I'll be able to get it. Right, right, right. So. And all this needs to be made more clear on the website. Yeah. yeah. The fact that like, for example, you guys on the inside of the knife, since you don't see yeah. the quality's there, the fact that all the bearings, like we didn't know about the bearings until like you basically told us until that I first told time, you, yeah. right? It's like the fact that when customers see that, they'll be like, wow. Like, right, right. Like, this thing's legit, right? Yeah, yeah. And that gets them hooked. Right. You want to learn more, and then you can use YouTube to sort of like complement that, right? Yeah, exactly. So that's so kind of the idea. YouTube sort of just become like a jumble of, let's put up a video, let's put up a video. There's no real organization, no exactly. structure, whatever. It's always been that way. Yeah. Exactly. So and, they want uh, the website to kind of... To tie everything tie together. Tie them together yeah. and then quickly get them like hooked. Like I realize there's something... There's nothing on my website that says, this is what a Norseman is. Like we talked about the bearings and all that. Yeah. I want a breakdown. That's what she's here for. Yeah, we want to do some graphics. We want to do an entire design uh, made with a vector diagram or something like that of the yeah, knife yeah. and then yeah. break it down into the different bolts and screws that there are because they make, like they, you guys custom make your own bolts. Yeah, exactly. And that's every, everything. everything. But that's not talked about. There might be a video, like a section of a video from three years ago that talks about it, but. Yeah, um, it's hard to find. Exactly, it's hard to find. So, and I, I like like we can put up a weekly update video. We talked yeah. about that. Of yeah. um, it only goes on the website. Yeah. It's not on YouTube. It's not on Instagram. It's not. So like yeah, you get this repeat customer that you guys were talking about that always comes to the website for the new update. Yeah. And then you know maybe they'll buy a hat or maybe they'll buy something else. Or maybe it's like it, 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 you post videos and you maybe have additional like written form content or something on the website. Yeah, just something a little, yeah. a little extra, or whatever it turns out to be. Yep, I love it. It's possible to get in contact with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What did you have to I, do? I signed up for your subscriber list, and then there was like some little. It's like some sort of like a thing attached that had your address on it. Yeah. It was like some little box. I had to like download a contact card in order to find your address. <laughs> 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 well, like over the years, I've had so many. I get so many emails. I can't always get back to them all. So like my website, my email is not on the website just yeah. because I don't want to flood that more. But yeah. as we leverage, as you help me out, as other people and Eric and Barry are taking more on, um, I have more time to run the business. You know, to actually like get get back to people and you know do it properly, right? Are you guys you know, still doing the podcast every week? Every week. We're gonna do it this See, morning. I told you guys. That's, that's, like, that's another thing. Like, throw on your website because I didn't even totally. like. Some group members thought that it was like it was a one-time thing, but I was like adamant that it was every week. Oh so. yeah, we're at like episode forty-two now. Yeah, exactly. We got mentioned in one. We, we saw yeah, it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we're like shocked about that. Yep. So yeah. how did you guys find groups when I was the first class? Oh, uh, one of my friends suggested it to me. Nice. Oh, yeah. As a project idea or Not just in general? Idea. He showed it to me I think a year or two ago. It was, uh, he's into knives and he, right. he, he, I think he found you on Instagram. Nice. And I was like, oh, these knives are dope. I think a few <laughs> of us have organically found it over the years just on our own and we just didn't think of it. We didn't know you guys were around. A friend of ours, he, it's interesting, after the first, uh, the first Instagram post when he posted like, oh, we have a question shit's coming. He's like, how's Grimm's mom? I'm like, how'd you know we went to Grimm's mom? He's like, you were on Instagram. I'm like, you know Grimsbo? He's like, yeah, I follow their page. The knives are sweet. <laughs> yeah, even like we have a, like a machine shop on campus. Right. You guys are obsessed with their knives. Nice. So, yeah. Brian Ty was the first knife maker I saw when I first learned about this business. Because the guy that told me about custom knives 
said, oh, I've got to come some knife with Brian. Let's, you want to come with me? And I'm like, yes. He's got a shop in his basement with a CNC machine. Yes, I want to go. <laughs> Have you, do you talk with him? Like? Oh, all the time. We get our steel from him. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, most of it. Or some He's of it. He's for some of it, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, because he's the only importer in Canada yeah. for the Damascus steel, the Dona steel. Uh, oh, wow. He supplies everyone then. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm super stoked that you guys could do this for us yeah. and uh, a lot of really helpful stuff. That was super fun. Aaron's been, you know, we've known each other for a couple months now through yeah. my wife. Um, but she's only really known about our business for like what a week and a half. Yeah. Like yeah. And almost immediately, you're like, "Yep, I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. Let's do this." So, what was your impression of the, the presentation? And like, did you know more about us now than? Uh, definitely know more about you guys now, and I definitely have a more clear idea about your business model too. And I think that's the most important thing too, because I've only known about you guys for a short time, like you said. Right. So um, it's nice that upon coming in on my second week, I can have a little bit of training almost for like, all right. Here's what Crucial Knives is all about. Here's a great presentation by a bunch of engineers and their strategy. Yeah. And now just pick that and do it. And just start running with it, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like that's part of the reason for bringing her on is because I have so many crazy ideas when I'm so slammed that I just want to run with everything. So it's going to be really, really fun. Thanks, guys. Take care.